If you like pineapples, you're going to love pineapple wine. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Again, of course, as always, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons and I will do one of these once a week. Now the process that I'm going to use to make this wine is as follows. We're going to bring our one gallon of water to boil in a large pot. While we're waiting for that to boil, we're going to uh, remove the skin from my pineapples, cut those into small chunks. Me, I'm going to put mine in a blender and blend it to a nice puree. I'm then going to take that and put it in a straining bag. That will go into the pot of boiling water for at least 15 minutes. What we're trying to do is uh, make, uh, sterilize the fruit to make sure that we've killed all the harmful bacteria and bugs that might uh, interrupt our wine. While we're waiting for the uh, water to cool down just a bit, we're going to go ahead and add our sugar uh, and we're going to drop in our tea bag. Now the tea bag is not going to stay in there. We're actually going to remove that uh, 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 before we put the, everything in our, in our fermenter. Uh, we're, things come down to room temperature. We're going to add our peptic enzyme. We're going to let that work for 24 hours. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and uh, add our yeast. Right now I'm using Premier Blanc uh, uh, Red Star yeast. Again, you can use anything you want. It'll work just fine. Uh, after the yeast has been added. We simply uh, let everything sit in the fermenter for at least a good week or two before we rack it into our secondary fermentation vessel. And uh, after that, give it a good uh, two, three months and uh, you're done. Let's get these pineapples ready for juicing. Let's uh, cut off the top of this one. And let's cut off the bottom of this also. Yeah, let's get rid of this uh, center core. We won't be using that. All right. I'll just do the same for the uh, rest of the pineapple and uh, finish up on the second one. And we'll go ahead and uh, start uh, chucking those in the uh, blender. I ended up with uh, about five and a half uh, cups of, uh, of juice. Now I did use some of the water that uh, was uh, boiling, some of our one gallon water that was already boiling. So uh, that added a little bit to the amount of juice that I, that I ended up with. But the next step that we need to do now is that we need to take our, uh, our pulp and our juice and go ahead and get that in boiling water for 15 minutes to kill any, any germs.
Now let's let that come to a boil. It's now been about 15 minutes, actually it's been more than 15 minutes. We can just go ahead and uh, turn off the heat. We can, <laughs> still got a pretty good boil, but while it's slowly coming not to a boil, let's go ahead and add our, our sugar. By the way, this was like four cups of sugar. And let's give that a stir. And this would also be a good time to go ahead and uh, drop in our tea bag. Where it would do some good. And uh, just go ahead and let that set. Now again, the tea bag is basically being used as a substitute for tannin. Uh, it works almost just as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let that seep. Now that our pineapple juice has come to a nice room temperature, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put that in our fermenter. We're then gonna add our lemon juice that was squeezed earlier. We're gonna add our peptic enzyme, and then we're gonna wait 24 hours, and then we're gonna pitch our yeast. Now so far, I've been a 50-50% ratio of making this without splashing it all over the place. It looks like my averages have just gone up. includes our tea bag which we now got to remove because it has done its thing already. Let's go ahead and add our um, juice of one squeezed lemon. I'm going to add about uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of uh, Peptic enzyme, which looks like I'm running a little bit low. Not enough for this this batch, but it's time to reorder a new supply. And let's go ahead and sprinkle that one in there. swirl and the reason why I'm giving it a little swirl is because I forgot to put the spoon on the table to give it a little stir but this will do the trick as well so there you go we we'll sit this for 24 hours let the pepper enzyme break down some of that pulp so we can extract more juice after that yeast time after that fermentation time after that it's time for wine <laughs> okay it's now time to uh, pitch our yeast and what I've measured out is a half a teaspoon of yeast. And all we need to do is just sprinkle it along the top. No need to stir it, no need to bloom it, no need to do anything other than just sprinkle it across the top. Uh, just go ahead and put your cap on if you're firming the vessel nice and tight. Put this aside somewhere where it's uh, relatively nice and dark for the next uh, week and a, or week and uh, or two. Uh, after which, you're going to then uh, rack it or siphon uh, your uh, wine into a secondary fermentation vessel so that you can remove a lot of that uh, dead ye yeast or lease that's uh, at the bottom of your fermenter. Give it at, uh, roughly two or three months, and voila, <laughs> it's time for wine. So. Here we go.